Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today you're going to learn some, uh, some new terms, uh, some new things in triangles, and also going to apply some terms you're already familiar with and in, in see what happens when we apply them to triangles. So, all sorts of triangle fun here. Let's start with uh, a new term, a term you're not familiar with, a median of a triangle. So median of a triangle, you should pause and write this down. Uh, is a segment from a vertex of a triangle, a corner of the triangle, to the midpoint of the opposite side. So in this triangle here, for example, I could find the midpoint, let's say, of this side right there, call that M. And if I drew the segment from that midpoint to the opposite vertex, that would be called a median of the triangle. And of course I could do this for any of the, the three sides, so you could actually have three different medians. So I could find the midpoint of that side as well and connect it to the opposite vertex, and you could do all of those. And we're actually going to explore that a little bit uh, a little bit later. But that is a median of a triangle. Next, we're going to look at an altitude of a triangle. Now, that's a term you may have heard before. It's also sometimes just called the height of a triangle. Uh, but it's important that we define it because it can get a little bit tricky. So you see here we've defined it here as uh, a perpendicular segment from a vertex to the line that contains the opposite side. Now that's kind of a wordy definition, but you're going to see here why it's important. So an altitude, so for example, if I was drawing the altitude from this vertex, it would be perpendicular to the opposite side, so straight down. It's as if uh, you dropped a ball and it went straight down to the opposite side. So by straight, I mean perpendicular to that opposite side. Okay, and you could certainly have a, a an altitude from one of the other vertices. So I could draw the altitude from, let's say, this vertex here and see what that looked like. And that would, again, it would have to be perpendicular to the opposite side. Now, why all the words in that original definition? Well, let's look at this triangle over here, this obtuse triangle. Um, so now if you wanted to draw the altitude from this side, it gets a little tricky because if you want to go perpendicular to the opposite side, what you'd actually have to do is extend that side out. So it would be actually outside of the triangle. Again, if you imagine that triangle being like a building and you were standing at this point right up here at the top, uh, right up here at the top, if you were looking at that point right there, and you were to fall straight down, you want to know how far you had to fall, you'd fall straight down. You wouldn't be inside the triangle, you'd be falling straight down. So the altitude actually occurs outside the triangle. So it's perpendicular, if you look at the language in this, to the line that contains the opposite side. So this line that contains the opposite side, it is still perpendicular to that. So it's important to know that an altitude can actually occur outside of a triangle. Now we're going to make some connections to some things that, uh, that you may remember from back at the beginning of the year when we, we did some activities around the idea of equidistant. Equidistant, one of my favorite math words. So here are some theorems, and you're going to need to write these down because they're important. If a point is on a perpendicular bisector of a segment, if it's on the perpendicular bisector, so remember a perpendicular bisector, this line, this line right here, is the perpendicular bisector because it is perpendicular to segment AB and because it bisects segment AB. It splits it into equal parts. So the theorem says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, so I'm just going to pick a random point, let's say this one, I'll call it C, if it's on the perpendicular bisector, then it is equidistant from the endpoints. So that means the distance from C to A must be the same as from C to B. Okay. So if you're on the perpendicular bisector, you must be equidistant from the endpoints. Well, it turns out the converse is also true. Right? This happens a lot. Converse is also true. So if a point is equidistant from the endpoint. So see here, my text is a little funny over there, sorry about that, but we're just going to keep going. So if I have a point C, which just happens to be equidistant from the endpoints, equidistant from A and B, the endpoints of that segment, then it must lie on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. 
So I know from this theorem that since C is equidistant from A and B, that if I were to draw the perpendicular bisector of AB, it would go right through C. The perpendicular bisector would go right through C. Now this is another one that we explored at the beginning uh, when we moved the desks out of the way and, and did our little equidistant activity. So it's a little bit harder to, to visualize, a little harder to follow, so try to stay with us. If a point is on the bisector of an angle. So you see here I've drawn an angle bisector. Uh, I'm going to call this point A, so that's ray AC. Ray AC is the angle bisector. If it's on the angle bisector, then it is equidistant from the sides of the angle. Well, what does it mean? What is the distance from C to the sides of the angle? So let's say this side here. Well, remember, it's the shortest distance, which we have always defined as the perpendicular distance, or straight to, to, to that segment. So the distance from C to that side of the ray would be this, and the distance from C to the other side of the angle, that ray there, would be this. So if C is on the angle bisector, then those two segments, those two distances, must be equal. And that's going to happen anywhere you go on the angle bisector. I could go, let's say, in here a little bit closer. If I'm on the angle bisector, then the distance from the two sides is going to be equal, equidistant. Now, of course, the converse is also going to be true. So if you have a point somewhere inside that angle, well, anywhere really, and it's equidistant from the sides of the angle. So you see I've drawn this point C, drawn this point C right here, and it's equidistant from the sides by the markings, so the distance to this side and the distance to that side are equal, then that point C must lie on the angle bisector of that angle. So if I were to draw the angle bisector, it must go right through point C. So that's the, the converse of that theorem.